Happy Tuesday and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Rocketeer Minute where each and every day, Monday through Friday, we go over one minute of the greatest adventure movie Walt Disney's ever made, the 1991 Joe Johnston directed feature, The Rocketeer. I'm one of your hosts, Jim O'Kane of TVDads.com. And I'm Hal Bryan at, wait, Jim? Ooh, what is that? I hear a noise. You're listening to a special Billy Campbell episode on the Rocketeer Minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Campbell. Oh my goodness, how many more times do I have to listen to that? <laughs> well, it's minute 62, so a maximum of what, uh, 48, oh, 49? No! So if you're back every day. But yes, we'll, if you're willing to do every single episode. <laughs> yes. Send me to the Hooskow now. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's flapping your yap too much. That's what it is. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Now straighten up before we hang one on your kisser. Oh, uh, you goons. Well, <laughs> uh, it's going to take a lot of cabbage. Uh, wow. Well, welcome back to another 30s episode. <laughs> Here we are on the on the back of a dog, and uh, uh, we're watching the, uh, the rock- uh, uh, Billy Campbell, the Rocketeer himself. Thanks for being on again. Oh, thanks uh, for having me. I love uh, being here. It, it, it is such a privilege. <laughs> it, it, is, it is great that we can <laughs> yes. just pick this, pick this Oscar-worthy, but yet Oscar-not-nominated uh, role that should have been there. Uh, you, actually, you're kind of dressed like an Oscar if, if an Oscar had a fin there. You've got that, that beautiful hat. and mm. uh, Hal and I oh, were talking And there's about your it. memoir title, Billy, If an Oscar yeah. Had a Fin. <laughs> the it Billy Campbell me. story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hal, Hal, Hal and I talked about... Uh, how great! How great that that helmet looks! It's just so it, it it's more than a hood ornament. I mean, it's just such that it is a, a beautiful thing. It's a thing of beauty. It really is. It, is. Wow. it just instantly instantly resonates. Yeah. And, you know, the second I saw it in the in the the first graphic novel I picked up, I just thought, well, I would like that, please. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, I couldn't even tell you really what the story was at first. I just I just had to have it. Yeah, no, you, I mean, that, that that original poster, when you see it, you say to yourself, I want to see this movie. It just looks cool. And uh, you know, and, and then we see the next part of it being cool is that uh, you hit that that ignition button. And right. once again, poor uh, poor Peavy <laughs> gets thrown. Uh, <laughs> That's right. And I think I really think that is Alan Arkin. I, at least it looks like I'm getting tossed into a bunch of boxes. I no, I think, think, so. think no? I think right here I'm scrubbing and, and – I- I think that oh. is not Alan Arkin. It really looks like um, a wig to me. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, it's a wig. I'm, the further and I scrub, so. yeah. If you stop at a second uh, precisely uh, zero one, um, you can have a pretty good shot of his face. It's a young guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah younger guy. Yeah, yeah, younger guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> he does a good he does a good job selling that moment of getting yeah, out into a bunch of boxes. And you know this takeoff scene. Speaking of selling good moments. Uh, you know the the practical smoke effect behind the behind the bulldog and that launch and and I don't know if this whole thing was a composited in with a maquette if there was uh, if if there was a stuntman in there on a on a crane for part of it and then they somehow transition I'm just not sure but it's mm. uh, it, it still really stuck. looks good. I'm still stuck on i I'm, I'm scrubbing in the first second, and I just yeah. love I love practical effects. I really, really do. You'll see in the in the in the first cut, you know, I have my put the helmet on, I put my hands down, right, and I, I look up to the sky, and then a light comes on. Yeah, right? absolutely. yeah, and you cut to the light. next thing inside. And there's just a light outside that's fading as he gets blown back. Right. There's yeah. nothing. There's no smoke. There's no nothing. And it's perfectly effective. It's just no, it's, a light. They drop they drop that sound on top of it and yep. you you're totally there. You're yep, totally you're in, totally in the universe. Sold. And then he goes up in the and I'm looking at the and yeah, I think that's a whole that's not that's just smoke and light on top of the bulldog and a um uh, what do you call a? Um, a it's a process C- shot. C- a process yeah. or a CGI or uh, yeah. composite. And, uh, and composite like, thing. Okay. Like you were saying, out with Lucky Lindy in the bean field. <clears throat> there, the one flaw in that is when mm-hmm. you look at the Rocketeer maquette, it is not getting any kind of. It, it's strobing. It doesn't have any kind of blending effect. The background stars they have right, they strobe. You get like streaks yeah, of that's light. That's true. Yeah. Yep. But the the Rocketeer himself is just perfectly in frame, and he yep. stay. You know, he's, yep. there's no shuddering. Yeah, but of you know, for a half a second shot, it's okay. It's, yeah, and and that, like you said, the practical effects are just magic. Yeah, 
It really works. It's 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 just. I mean, there's something. I hope they sort of. You know how how self aware this film is. I hope that the next film is as self aware. And that they, you know, I, 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 it's hard for me to even describe what I what I'm thinking of, but that they, there's something really charming about these effects, you know, yeah. that they that yeah. they aren't quite perfect, and that they are sort of rudimentary. Yeah, and and, and but they 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 give you it, it's the feel of the 30s. You're getting that. Mm. Yeah, that's what it would look like in the 30s. That's <laughs> you kind of you know you don't need a guy on a string. Yeah, but right. it just gives you that bit of magic, just that yeah. little. Disney esque kind of a thing yeah, to it, yeah. um, and then uh, of course you're you're interrupted here on in the middle of your arc <laughs> by a large uh, revolt. What what kind of That's pistol right. is that, uh, Hal? That, I think it's another one of the uh, the cult. Of, it looks to me like the cult official police, if I'm remembering correctly. And it's it's interesting to me. So it's you know good classic thirty eight revolver. Uh, it's probably a, a four inch barrel. It might, it might even be a six as long as that is. Mm-hmm. Interesting to me that we don't know at this point who that is. Is that, you know, is this a is this a good guy? Is it a bad guy? All we know is that they're pointing that at uh, pointing that at PV as he's, you know, recovering from a, yet another blowback from Cliff's launch. And of course, the Horner ominous music uh, and the sudden stop. It's such he, great. Right. It's such a great score. Such oh. a great score, and it's just fantastic. And it's uh, it's great too. How once the we see from the perspective of the gunman, PV in focus, the, the gun in the foreground out of focus. Then you know this scene, uh, we, we sort of come into this scene with a big flash of light, and then we have that same transition as another blinding flash of light. But it's you know it's uh, it's the paparazzi, the the proto paparazzi in the South Seas Club with another one of those lightsaber style uh, flash handles on the side of that that beautiful camera. Yeah. We're just thinking, and uh, the South Seas camera girl being portrayed by a woman named Kathleen Michaels, who unfortunately having so common a name, I tried to track her down, but right. somewhere I hope she's doing well. I see, according to the uh, to those scoundrels at IMDb, that uh, she did a uh, she has small hand in a Lorenzo Lamas movie called Final Round. That she was sort of miscellaneous mm-hmm. crew and maybe a body double, mm-hmm. and that's uh, according to IMDb, that's about it. So she's she's moved on to sort of other things apparently, but who knows. You know? She could be the head of Netflix. We never know. So. That's exactly <laughs> true. Things. She could be listening right sure. now saying, wait, that's me. If she's out there, bring uh, her on. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. And we're, we're back with, uh, with Jenny and Neville. Jenny the... and Neville. Yes. Gosh. Oh, Neville. Staring... Yeah. Oh, Neville. <laughs> <laughs> Staring across the table. Mm. And I, I just like the way she's, she's all kinds of nervous and, and good old Neville is just He's rock solid. He's just, he doesn't move. You can scroll through things and he, barely enough motion just to, just to move his eyebrows. Yeah. Right. Uh, he is, true. he is absolutely in his element here. He is so, oh, he is gosh. so comfortable. He makes the purple yeah. suit look good. He's like a laser beam. And if you look, yeah. I'm scrubbing through. I, I'm not sure I ever see him blink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I haven't seen him. Oh, uh, there's there's one. Oh, there's one at oh, did you uh, catch second one? second seventeen. If you go through seventeen, but that, that's still the only time. It. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Right. Yeah. There. He's using no. he's using yeah. it as punctuation. But, but he was uh, he was spending the previous sixteen seconds planning that blank <laughs> and, right. and making sure that he knew exactly <laughs> exactly when that was going yeah. to happen. Yeah. The man has his, the man has more game than Milton Bradley. He's just oh, that's, wow. That's, and his his toast. Here's to you and to the extraordinary way your face catches the light. Catches <laughs> God, yes. yeah. which you know came out of one of his in one of Neville Sinclair's yes, movies. Course, right. just... yes. Although she wasn't, she hadn't uh, cottoned to that quite yet. That uh, no. that he'd rehearsed uh, rehearsed this stuff. And using uh, those are the old fashioned kind of uh, champagne glasses, which uh, the modern ones use flutes. But uh, mm, back right. then, back then, the thing was having a more open faced uh, yeah. cocktail style glass. Yeah, yeah such elegance all the way and, through. You know, you have to admire uh, Jennifer Connelly. Really, does every moment she's selling. I'm on a date with Neville Sinclair. I'm that's on a right. date with it's right. just and trying to be cool. I mean, that's just the whole. Oh, I gotta be yeah, cool you, here. You see that struggle in her, but uh, mm. but but there's there's something. There's always something stronger in Jenny's character throughout the mm. whole movie. She is a damsel. She does end up in some some modest amounts of distress here and there, mm. but she's not uh, she's not helpless. She's wonderfully no. strong and capable. So, and uh, and she's she's blown away by this experience at the South Seas Club, but she's 
she's not going to let it show, even if she struggles no. with it a little bit. No, she's it's it's a, I think it's a fantastic performance, and I she I knew always sort of knew that she had real chops, real chops, and she spent most of her time since this movie proving it. Right. But she, I think she, I, I'm not sure she she's proud of this film, and I don't exactly know why, but I I think she's I knew that she had huge chops yeah it's and, uh, it's i mean I, I know she you know like a lot of her films are very very serious films i mean she's she's really done quite a, quite a range of, of very mm. very serious movies but i i hear that a lot from a lot of people who their earlier films they just want to what i know uh, a friend of mine was doing work uh, on a fast times retrospective and uh, sean penn did not want to talk about the movie at all and it's like yeah Gosh, really? that's probably, if not anything else, that, that's probably what he's most known for. Yeah. And not, you know, trying to deny it is just, yeah. you're, you know, it's kind of ignoring your talent. But, uh, right. but anyway, she's, you know, I'm, I'm, she's having a, a current career doing pretty uh, good. In, yeah, it's, a, you know, I think folks also want to be known for what they want to be known for, you know, and and uh, I know that uh, I know that Jen was always, she always really wanted to be a serious actress and be taken seriously and uh and you can sort of see in the when she got the when she got the you know she got the clout to to choose her roles where she's gone she's gone to highly dramatic highly intense uh highly intense material and i think she's more than proved herself but uh I'm not sure why you should be reluctant about things that uh, helped you to get where you are. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as, as long as you know, you, you she's found what do they call it? Finding your when you go someplace to find your bliss, and she's found mm. her bliss now in the kind mm. of movies that she likes to do. So. Her kind of dark, dark bliss. Yep. Yeah, gosh, <laughs> dark bliss. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Maybe that could be her memoir. That's where <laughs> Dark we're, bliss. It's, it's <laughs> we're brainstorming titles here. Either that, or or, or and it sounds like something maybe straight to video. You know? uh, All right. What would be the titles of your respective uh, oh, uh, memoirs? Come on, well, Jim. I think. Uh, I, Wing, yeah, go ahead, wings, Jim. Wings over the. Uh, no, I was going to yes. say. Oh well, actually, oh. I, I, it, it would be the. I'm actually, my internet fame is that I am the subject of a rather popular internet meme. If you go to, if you go to Google, I'll give you a moment to, to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the title? Yes, yes we'll wait. I, yes. Uh, it, go, uh, type in Google, uh, how to pose like this and press the image button. Really? Yes. yes. How, how to pose like, like this. this. How to pose like this. And I've, then I've press the before. image button. The images button in Google. Yeah. And there is... Is it you with the book sitting yes. In, yes. in the and weeds? Just, yeah, that, I'm actually waiting for the launch of uh, <laughs> STS-118. <laughs> and notice the title of the book. How to pose like this. Yeah, it's just like the old Dutch cleanser thing. So that's, <laughs> I, I think I, that's probably the, my title, How to Pose Like This. <laughs> how to Pose Like This. <laughs> so that's my, wow. my big internet fame besides uh, doing TV dads. Um, how? what would you do? I don't Boy, know. Boy, I, can't, uh, I can't top... I can't top that one. I don't know if I have anything that would be so long term, but if I if I had to write it today, and uh, and of course it would be dedicated to Billy Campbell, uh, <laughs> clearly. But uh, I, I think I would just have to go with picking fleas, picking fleas. <laughs> or picking fleas. or maybe professional pea flicker or flea picker, <laughs> whichever <laughs> you prefer. <laughs> pea flicker, That's pea flicker. Hilarious. You like that, yeah. don't you? Yes. <laughs> Just for uh, you. Yeah. Uh, wow. I swear I'm only drinking water over here <laughs> at the moment. Yes. I'm not. <laughs> He's just well, noticing cheers. the marvelous way your eyes catch the light. That's yes, exactly. Uh, I love the I, way the microphone catches the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. A clink of the glass, yes. By the way, while we're speaking of uh, Timothy Dalton, his his jacket is particularly purple in this scene. Sometimes it looks like it's kind of a silver, and but this is, I, I guess, with all the yellow lights in the background, it really brings out the purple parts of it, mm. which uh, we were talking in other episodes that uh, purple is, uh, uh, unless you're Batman, purple is kind of a sign of evil in comic books. So definitely he's wearing the... Vol- vol- or the Phantom, outfit. unless you're the Phantom. That's true. That's ah, true. that's true. Yeah. There's the most purple superhero Which we have i think wasn't wasn't that about the same year as this did, did uh the uh, yeah the billy, billy zane phantom mm. oh billy zane <laughs> um 
We used to we used to pal close. around a bit uh, um, back in the uh, Back to the Future days. Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, roughly the uh, roughly the same time. Yeah, it was a good year for a uh, good year for superheroes. Then, of course, unfortunately, the Terminator came out, and that was a really yeah. bad timing. Uh, um, if you, I just did just look it up just to be sure. So, Phantom was a few years later, ninety six. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I would have sworn it was older than that. I was. I would have yeah. said ninety two, maybe at the latest. But uh, mm. that was another well, one that I think uh, was maybe a little bit underrated. I think there was more potential there than we Go saw. Ahead. When was when was Alec Baldwin in the shadow? When was that? Was that about the same time or? Boy, that mm, seems. I think that was a little later. Yeah, I I was uh, ninety four. So it kind of splits the difference between the two films. Okay, yeah, he was still doing. So. He was doing Hunt for Red October uh, while this ah, was going right. on. But uh, but but Jim, of those three sort of uh, you know thirties pulp hero uh, films that came out in that early to mid nineties. Which one are we still talking about? Yeah, that's right. We're, we're on the Rocketeer. You know, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. If it were <laughs> Billy Campbell as uh, as the Phantom, well, maybe this would be a very different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or actually, to be exactly the same, we just say a different word once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. Uh, well, we're actually we're watching uh, the villain who hears music where there isn't any music, so that's kind of oh, spooky in itself. But uh, Jenny I takes it the right whole, way. The musical, the musical, the score, and this whole thing, the the um, is is just it's just brilliant and the moment of silence before they start dancing and the but we you know we skipped over we just skipped over this uh if we're talking about the dance now we skipped over the whole uh, uh couple second long few second oh. long um chinese theater thing. yeah yeah this was this was oh, an, an, right. an almost moment where uh, mm-hmm. we're looking at jezebel and, and things like that there's yeah. the jezebel playing at the chinese yeah. Uh, diagonally across the street from the hotel. The Hollywood Roosevelt. Land is in the back. Yep. We haven't right. knocked, knocked down the letters yet. Yeah, and they haven't built the Dolby Theater yet down the, <laughs> no, down the corner there. Right. Yeah, if you uh, folks out there, we've talked a lot about the uh, the official souvenir magazine of the Rocketeer. And if you do read through that, it does step you through the story. And there's uh, storyboards and story description that has, uh, has Cliff flying over Grumman's Chinese, or shortly before this shot, mm-hmm. Uh, somebody is falling, and Cliff swoops in, saves him, sort of on the way, and then lands. Uh, gets his feet in the. You, so there just happens mm-hmm. to be some fresh wet cement. Takes off, flies away, and then somebody else would run up and then write with their finger the Rocketeer, and then that's how the Rocketeer's footprints ended up. Yeah, uh, those big you know. jodhpurs now. <laughs> right, yeah. but uh, you know it, it's interesting. We had asked uh, asked you, I think, pretty early on, Billy, whether mm-hmm. that had ever been shot, and apparently it wasn't. It was just storyboarded and scripted. Yeah. And, you know, you think about it, it really would have, I think, sort of stumbled the pacing. It would have been hard to justify. Mm-hmm. I and, mean, yes, stopping to save somebody's life would have given you a little bit more heroism. But yeah. but this is Jenny who is, you know she's in, in trouble. And yeah. you're going to get to her. So yeah. stopping along the way, I say, uh, I hate to say it, but let the guy fall. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, I I have to agree. I think yeah. it was a, it would have been a, just a little bit of a, mm-hmm. just a beat too too long. Right. Yeah. You got to go rescue the skirt. I, I've yeah. Got, I've, I've yeah, got to rescue the rescue the, the, the dame. dame. Yeah, with the gams, <laughs> with the walking the get, sticks, yeah. the getaway Res- sticks, getaway yeah. sticks. Uh, rescue the the butter and egg fly, the hot mama, the sweet mama, <laughs> the sweet patootie, the dish, the looker, the tomato. <laughs> I have. A she question. was a real no. sweaterful. <laughs> yeah, with a great pair of getaway sticks. <laughs> Kind of dame could make a bishop kick out a stained glass window. All right. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't know where to go. Take out um, my gat and teach us some manners. Yeah. Uh. Very quickly, in front of the uh, in in front of the theater, beautiful 1936 Buick, that white uh, white Buick with the black fenders and things. That uh, mm. uh, according to uh, according to my flea picking, also showed up uh, uh, a bit later in an episode of Quantum Leap. Okay. Um, so there you have it. Look I have a that. question about that. That Hollywood Land sign. Now, I've not lived. I've been to Los Angeles many times. Worked there and all kinds of stuff. But to me, has Mount Hollywood gotten a little taller? Because I don't recall that you can stand in front of Grumman's and see. No, I don't think the you Hollywood can. Land sign. I don't think, I think you can. Little, yeah. No. I, I, I needed needed for placement. I'm sure, but it's, yeah. it was like wait. A minute. I mean, we're at eye level here across the street. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and no, no, that's not that's not possible. But. Yeah. Uh, but it's a nice little cheat, right? Yeah, it sells the sells the location. Yeah. And By the way, one of my favorite one of my favorite bars in Hollywood is right where just about just about where this is. If you go in the so in Frank the, in inside no. the Hollywood Roosevelt, no, inside the Hollywood. Oh, Roosevelt, okay, in the Roosevelt. Yep. Go to the left there. Fantastic place. Mm. Uh, some of their app. I can't even think of some of their appetizers, but they've got some scallop like um, 
uh, bacon rolled scallops. That oh, are just, yeah. Oh. We're standing. So, we're actually standing on the uh, in this shot. We're st- we the camera is on the is on the uh, Roosevelt side of the street. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think the Roosevelt is just to the left. Or maybe we're, uh, we're right no, about no, at the Roosevelt. We're, we're right about in front of the Roosevelt because it's yeah, on that corner right. there yeah. as it goes down. My favorite bar in Hollywood is, is down the street, same side as the Chinese theater, uh, a few streets down called Musso and Frank's. Yes. And uh, it's been there forever. And it's just when you walk in, you just smell Sinatra and many other people. I've, I've been to the one in Manhattan on 61st Street. It's a great place to interview people because you it, 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 it's, it's one of the few places that you uh, it, that people do that turn that, that they do in Hollywood. where They're trying to figure out if you're somebody. They keep <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was interviewing the well, for my TV dad thing. I was interviewing uh, the star of one of the uh, uh, one of the shows that was on ABC. Mm. And while we were there, Caroline Kennedy walked in, uh, followed by Alan Alda, and they were sitting at two different tables. And I was just like, <laughs> wow. Woof. So uh, nice, nice place. But a lot of it's it's right across the street from where they used to film. Uh, well, I guess they're still filming some of them there. The uh, the ABC soap operas are like right across the street from it. Mm. So uh, a lot of now, soap stars. Did Alan Alda come up to you, Jim, and ask you if you knew how to pose by any chance? <laughs> Was he? Uh, aren't you that guy? Yeah, no, no, I never get, I never get recognized for that. But, uh, That's amazing. Except, you know, except for <clears throat> except for my friends, every once in a while, it'll show up on Reddit and say, "Isn't this you?" <laughs> yes, it's, yes, it is. I'm a meme. <laughs> That's uh, something to aspire to. You know, it's funny, before we leave the uh, the Chinese theater, uh, we see the movie playing there, Jezebel, Betty Davis, uh, mm. directed by, you know, William Wyler, amazing, yeah. amazing director, one incredible career. You got uh, Henry Fonda's in the film, Max Steiner doing the music. Uh, I thought it was an interesting little touch. Number one, at first, you frowned a little bit because that movie came out in March of 38, and this is October, but number one, movies had much, much longer runs, uh, you know, really up until um, through even through the 70s and 80s, it was much, much more common to have a movie lasting. And the last one I remember having a big long run like that, I think it was probably Titanic into the even into the 90s. That seemed like that was in the theaters for months. Mm-hmm. The other thing I got a kick out of, though, with Jezebel is that the, the whole major plot point, at least at the beginning of that film, is uh, Betty Davis is supposed to wear a white dress to the ball and uh, instead she wears a red one. So interesting that we uh, we have this little nod to this film where this white dress plays this, or the lack of a white dress plays a role. And then, of course, we cut, we're cut. we back to yeah. the South Seas Club, and Jenny is wearing that, uh, that stunning number. Oh, yeah. that's and, delicious. That's a delicious knit. And we'll... <laughs> Thank you, sir. William Wyler also being the uh, the director of probably one of the better aviation movies, uh, even though it doesn't have a lot of airplanes in it that are not being chopped up. Uh, Best Years of Our Lives coming out. Oh, in, absolutely. Uh, seven years after this? Eight years after this. It, one more tiny little thing of this frame of the Chinese theater. Uh, if you look over to the right-hand side with the twin beams of a uh, spotlight, right. look closely and tell me where they're coming from. <laughs> oh. There's no... Where are they there's coming really, from? There's really no place <laughs> yeah. they could be coming from. <laughs> yeah. They're coming either from the roof of the car, right? Or, they got, they got uh, but you can the... see you can see right through the windows, right? Yeah. And you can see the uh, so they're they're a, they're a bit of a cheat that works perfectly yeah, because it does. the shot is so quick. But right. uh, yeah, they're not coming from anywhere. The, the uh, Light, spotlights, are, yeah, yeah, that could be those, those graph like flash tubes getting yeah. bigger and bigger. The uh, and spotlights, the searchlights they would use back then for something like this. Those were not small Enormous. affairs. No, yeah, those were gigantic. absolutely massive. Yeah, yeah. Big burning you know, pieces of carbon in the middle and just uh-uh. you know, very very quickly. Uh, once many many years ago, I was flying. Uh, uh, a couple of friends who just in college, we decided to fly to uh, Yakima, Washington for dinner because, because they had a sea galley, a, uh, which is sort of like a red lobster, but uh, you know, maybe not quite so high end. Yeah. And uh, we were flying back at night uh, over the mountains and there was a, there was a car dealership that was having their big grand opening and they had a, a searchlight going like this. And me as a, uh, as an invincible and absolutely brilliant 19 year old pilot, <laughs> Thought it would be cool to sort of fly around the spotlight or the searchlight and try to fly through it and everything else. Oh, jeez. Oh, and so I'm, you know, sort of waving around and going in circles and everything, trying to sort of match the movement of this thing. And then, unfortunately, I was I was just barely good enough that I that I got right through it. And then the second that thing hit the cockpit and I went blind, <laughs> I said to myself, 
Why am I doing this? <laughs> what? What, did what am I, I thinking? <laughs> why am I? Why am I such a moron? Uh, and you know, thirty years on, I'm still sort of shaking my head, uh, wondering what could possibly, what I possibly could have been thinking. But, uh, but I can tell you how even at uh, even at so say you know twelve fifteen hundred feet uh, above, those lights are exceedingly bright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all I could do was sort of give it power, get the wings to what I knew were about level, and just climb and blink a lot. It's, while, it's, even, uh, it's even worse when the eighty-eight millimeter cannons open up. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I had that that fleeting flash of, wow, what that uh, what that would have been like. But instead, uh, I was you know I was doing my best to take myself down. Apparently, yeah. I didn't need help from any <laughs> anti aircraft fire. Oh. Things you would tell your younger self. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. There, there's a there's don't a commercial, do that. There was a commercial on about a year or two ago, and it was this picture of this. It was like if time travel were possible, and it was about it was about investing money. But what happened was they were showing all these. Uh, young people walking around, and then these old people are showing up in front of them, grabbing them by the collars and slapping them silly. <laughs> it's like, I think that's that's the common reaction of everybody. You know, if you go back to half half your life ago, you just the first thing you do is grab it. Stop being stupid! Wow. wow. Right. So. <laughs> oh man! Um, Unfortunately, I think there's only. F- what are there, 45 or 50 copies of uh, our friend Brian Fee's uh, graphic yeah, novelist has been a guest. He did the uh, a comic strip about his his current self sort of skulking around the past of uh, of his younger self, the adventures of old time traveling Brian. And it is absolutely hysterical, but, uh, oh, that but a very, it, it, oh, it, it a very involve, limited run. Yeah, it does involve being stupid in the past, and you just want yes, to go back it, and correct it. it does. I, He's a little I, more subtle. He doesn't, I don't think he beats himself senseless <laughs> as we all wish we could, but... Uh, yeah. I have one one other thing to say about the Chinese. The first time I was ever at uh, Grauman's Chinese was in Christmas of 1968, and uh, my folks, my, my dad was visiting some uh, army buddies from uh, from the Los Angeles area. We went out we went out to the coast, and by accident we wound up at the U.S. premiere of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which was at the Chinese. <laughs> oh my gosh! And wow, out front, I love that movie. Oh, out, same here. Out, out front was Gen One One, parked right right where the you've uh, actually the seen was. it. Yes. It oh, was, I didn't know there. this. And the day before, I had missed it the day before, but Dick Van Dyke was there, and I was like, oh. oh. But still, you know, and I, and the thing was, at the time when they first released it, they didn't have any. There was a there was a commercial on television that showed a it was a cartoon guy opening up different doors, going Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Chitty, and he, he was <laughs> he was walking around, but they never said what Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was. And until you went to see the movie, it had been completely you didn't know it could have been a. You know, a, a toothpaste. It could have been anything, but there was this beautiful thing with the, you know, with the wings spread oh, out. Gorgeous and, car. Ah, so you, that was the, uh, you know, the uh, early on when uh, when my wife and I got into the antique and collectible toy business, one of the first things that I had to hunt down because my brother had one and I never did was the Corgi diecast, oh, yeah. Chitty yeah. Chitty Bang Bang, and you know, beautiful box. I ended up doing a little restoration work on it, but right there at the top, it says the most phantasmagorical toy in the history of everything. <laughs> and uh, it is absolutely just a beautiful model. You know, Billy, you asked us a while back if what uh, what other movies we might do sort of minute by minute. Of course, I coughed up some aviation stuff. And, yes, there's flying in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but that is one I would do in a heartbeat. Yeah, Writ- written I by just Ian adore Fleming. That movie. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's the idea that it's a James Bond movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Even starring, in, oh, not sorry, but with uh, and Gert, Gert Frobe as uh, Goldfinger, yeah, Gold, Goldfinger is in it. Goldfinger is in it, yeah. And, That's fantastic. Uh, and uh, his wife is also the, uh, the one that runs the spy school in uh, Casino Royale. So yeah, there's this. Oh, that's right. I I love that movie so much. I did a. Uh, I, I took the, I took the trailer of uh, Iron Man three, and <laughs> yes. I cut I cut the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang credits into Iron. If you if you go to Vimeo and type in Chitty Chitty Iron Man, you can watch my video. I'm, I'm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I'm throwing memes at you, but just yeah. If you go to, wow. go to Vimeo and do, go, I... type Chitty Chitty Iron Man, you can watch that tonight. I'm I'm writing it down it's right a... now. I absolutely lost it when I saw that, Jim. <laughs> that was. It's it's just something that had to be done once once I, I thought of it. I said no, I got to do this. So um, <laughs> anyway, that's. So I I'll see you guys later. I'm, yeah. I'm going to head it over to Vimeo right now. <laughs> we lost him, Jim. We uh, lost yeah. him. We, well, we'll, we knew this day would come. Well, let's let's get back to this. I mean, the, the yep. Ch- Chinese restaurant. We're going back to the All South right. Seas. That gorgeous set. That beautiful. Golly, what a great set that is! Right oh, down yeah. to the right oh, down to the gosh. tiles on the floor. Oh. And um, oh gosh. And then they they go out into the middle. I'm watching it right now. They walk out into the middle of the floor. It's just the best sort of oh. 
Oh, it cuts off. Oh, that's the end of the minute. Ah! Yeah, I know it's cruel, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes the minute is a harsh mistress, Billy. Oh, the uh. minute is such a harsh mistress. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's 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 just they 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 start doing that dancing and the music. It, yeah. Horner's music is yeah. so eerie at this point. Mm. And uh, there's the you know the producers the the producer's cousin and the the line editor's secretary and was, <laughs> all yeah, the other people that right. needed to be in the get me in a close up okay <laughs> so it's uh you know it's probably one of the Gordon brothers' daughters and I don't know yeah, but anyway yeah. <laughs> this is this is their spot yeah but it's just it's fantastic and it really is oh. in another life I'm gonna come back as Timothy Dalton because. Gosh, that guy knows how to move. He just, it's so he does. Crazy. He is some kind of suave. That's for sure. <sighs> Absolutely. So, uh, very quick, and forgive mm-hmm. me if it's a bit too personal, Billy. I, I don't think that you'll uh, that you'll take it this way. But uh, okay, no, um, that's way too personal. Uh oh, is it? Okay, <laughs> no. really? So no, that's uh, right. So you, your shoe size, you're not willing to share that with us no, after no. all this time? Absolutely not. Well, like I said, I knew we'd I knew we'd hit the wall eventually. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for everything, sir. It's been fun. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, we know that you and, and Jennifer Connelly were uh, involved. We've talked about that. You you had a relationship that lasted for we quite a while after this film. Bought groceries. Yeah. You bought groceries. Yeah. You went grocery shopping. You went right. to Ralph's. Um, maybe I, I don't know what, where you were uh, in that uh, in that in this scene, but just even in general, is it uh, would it be weird for you to be on the set and watching a scene like this uh, with someone that you were involved with, even if it wasn't the case here with Jennifer at this point? Is it weird for you as an actor to see see somebody you're involved with, uh, you know, acting and dancing and having this intimate moment with somebody else? I mean, no, not for me. It is just a job, and and uh, you do your thing. And if you're if you're in a relationship that's not uh, uh, insecure, and neither individual is uh, insecure, then then no, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be a problem at all. And it's not a problem for me. It's As, also not that it, it, it's also not that intimate. I get it because there's no, sure. there's, there's, like, there's camera not that operators intimate. and uh, yeah, they're having <laughs> soup and then they're dancing. <laughs> right. Um, I, mean, I know this is extraordinarily tame as sort of intimate yeah, scenes would yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. But there's this there's this the smoldering looks and things like this. I mean, the, to yeah. me, this would almost be uh, maybe I'm old fashioned, but this is this is to me is more powerful than something that would be a lot more sort of graphic and, and mm. traditionally intimate. It's just mm. you know the look and the dances and and yeah. uh, and the you know that that elegant interaction. Yeah, I mean, I think as I recall, um, I don't remember where in the shooting this was, but um, you know, I mean, we sort of came together during the shooting and and not really before it. So there was a period of time when I was on the set and I was, uh, you know, longing and, uh, and we were yet to sort of be together. I, I remember feeling, you know, I mean, as one does when one is terribly, terribly young, jealous of everyone and everything that had, <laughs> that had anything to do with her, you know, uh, that wasn't me. Um, but no, I mean, you know, in general, I have uh, no, and especially in my you know, as like a fine wine, I turn to vinegar. Uh, I, um, <laughs> you know, in these tw- years of mine that we one could describe as twilight, I have no, no, uh, no problems with anything like that. I have a question about about this time. It's got nothing to do with relationships. But when you were doing when you were doing this, this is your your mere weeks after coming off a of Ren Fair. Mm. And did you have the idea that you were going to do this and then go back to Ren Fair? Is it, did that, did, I mean, I was just wondering in, where that... In fact, how, Jim, I did this and did go back to Ren Fair. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yes. No kidding. Oh, was, yes. I went was, back to Ren Fair for years. I went to Ren Fair oh. every chance I got. And uh, I'm not sure that I I was ever again a paid employee of Rent Fair, but uh, I went back all the time. And of course, because I'd run around and work there for for uh, for a time, it was. I mean, even when I was working at Rent Fair, it wasn't like working. It was like uh, partying. You know, it was like a time machine. It was like going into a time machine to go party in some other time. And um, so, yeah. But I did. Uh, I did go back to Rent Fair. Okay. I, yeah. I just. I, I just keep wondering. You know, where where you saw your career path, or was it after after this? Did the roles start coming? rapidly or i mean no, i know you'd already done not you know the funny thing was i took myself sort of out of the running almost right away i i did um i did this and then i did dracula right away yeah. and um 
and then my friend uh, Stephen Lang, who is an actor. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, Stephen. Uh, Stephen and I met on Crime Story, uh, Michael Mann series in the mid '80s, um, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, Steve was doing um, was doing Hamlet on on Broadway at the wow. Roundabout Theater, and he asked if I wouldn't want to come and 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 do Hamlet, and so I did. Uh, I played Horatio. That was right after. Dracula, as I recall. In fact, as I was doing Hamlet in, uh, in, on Times Square at the Roundabout in New York, uh, Dracula premiered. I remember going to a theater with some of my castmates to watch it. And so I kind of I went to the East Coast and I stayed there for a year or so and just kind of disappeared. I sort of took myself out of the running. I, I don't know why exactly. I don't remember what my thinking was, but... Uh, I should have uh, maybe stayed on the West Coast and concentrated. You know, everything. wasn't he? Wasn't he Stephen Lang? Wasn't he in uh, Gods and Generals with you? Yeah, yeah, he was. In fact, while we were doing uh, Hamlet, he was then uh, uh, gearing up to do um, Gettysburg. He had me meet Ron Maxwell, uh, who directed Gettysburg, and uh, I went and played. Uh, I played a role in in Gettysburg. Uh, we were we had a high high old time down in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, as you can well imagine, <laughs> get the boys together and call them uh, Yanks and Rebels yeah. and f- show them the way to the nearest bar and uh, you've got let trouble. The, let the but, swords uh, wave, yeah. So we had a great old time and I had grown up doing Civil War reenactments in Virginia long before I um, even got into acting. So I had been doing reenacting and I just felt I was right in the soup because uh, I came to the, I came to Gettysburg like three four weeks before I was supposed to shoot, and I was like, "No, I have my tent. I don't need a hotel room." Um, uh, I just I was just camping out with the reenactors, and uh, of which I was one, you know. And uh, I sort of lived Gettysburg wow. for uh, a good a full month before I even started shooting, and uh, and then of course everyone descended on the place and. Uh, and it was uh, it was good times. Yeah. So so uh, oh. I kind of took myself out of the running after yeah. uh, after Dracula. I went to the East Coast and hung around there and had a lot of fun. You know, reenacting and drinking and acting and oh. drinking and and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the deal. Yeah, I I can reenacting is such a I I have oh, steered myself clear of it because I know hole. that I would get yes, involved. Is. They get into the. I mean, it's it's like cosplay for. <laughs> For oh war. yes, yes. And the people get down to what kind of buttons you're supposed to wear. Oh, and it's what magnificent. Yeah. It's absolutely magnificent. I remember going. My mom took me because I, from childhood, I was obsessed with the Civil War. And uh, my mom, on my 17th birthday, took me to a reenactment in uh, near Richmond, Virginia. I remember standing on the sidelines and way back behind the confederate lines and near the artillery and there was an artillery piece near me and the confederates had six artillery pieces i mean when when have i ever in my life seen six real artillery pieces you know it ranged along a ridge and the nearest artillery piece to us and its crew were uh, had some downtime you know while the battle was raging in the middle of the battlefield or something and there they were like in character talking about you know how the pigs were coming back on the farm in georgia and and uh and i just was absolutely transported it it i think uh made me eventually an an actor um well, but well, I, uh, yeah I, I could see i mean if, yeah. if you ever go and there, there's uh, i think you're talking about like petersburg out that way and the uh, mm. the, the battle of the crater were Hundreds of people show up every summer, and you oh, can yeah. watch, you you can watch the war yeah. right there, and yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's so engrossing. Yeah, um, yeah. I would love but, to do a Gettysburg minute or yeah, what well, have you. But uh... <laughs> okay, let me write this. Down. Yes, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a, a substantial group of World War II reenactors who uh, mm. who set up at our big flying and air show every year, and we've got a you know so sort of the whole section of the convention grounds devoted to the warbirds oh, fun. and so and we've got guys that are bivouacked there uh, all week uh, men and women um there's uh, there's a couple of uh, friends of mine who have a whole sort of uso contingent mm. and so they uh so you've got these uh, these women oh. <clears throat> i call them my uso dames they're over yeah. there uh, so reenacting <laughs> the whole scene on the on the home front yeah well you've got uh, you've got you know british and american uh, you know pilots and infantrymen and we've got oh. half tracks and tanks and everything else around oh. Oh, and, and then, of course, the airplanes. 
You yeah. were so broads. Yeah, you were so right. yeah. dolls. Um, exactly. Reminding uh, us all what we're fighting for, right? You were so... Oh, I love a woman uh. in uniform. Um, <laughs> uh, I did a sweet little uh, World War II, um, uh, very, very low-budget World War II um, uh, uh film shot in the Isle of Man uh, called The Brill Cream Boys which was uh, oh, wow. was just wonderful you should watch that film uh, it's not it doesn't I mean it was super low budget so there's like next to no actual plane work in it but uh, I think you'd probably appreciate the sweetness of the movie I'm putting it on my list as we speak wow. okay well, we're going to do Cinema Campbell pretty soon yeah, Cinema Campbell <laughs> see if that domain is available we'll get through the oh. whole we'll get through the whole uh, I haven't done a lot of big budget films but I've done a lot of films that I just love and they're just you know not perfect and maybe some of them not even good but I love them all uh, you find your bliss that's the thing mm. Wow. Well, this has been a, speaking of finding your bliss. We've got to let people that are uh, on their treadmills and <laughs> look, looking at the last, the you know, low battery warnings coming on. I was going to say, uh, this but, has been an epic minute. This is sort of a Cecil, you know, B. De minute. Yes. <laughs> 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 Which is wonderful. Uh, the time just flies uh, by, and what a yeah. what a privilege it is for us. Yeah. Oh, we've got, yeah for me too. We've got. We've got lots more to come, so please uh, join us here uh, tomorrow. We're going to talk. Uh, actually, we're going to we're going to talk to you a little bit about the music of uh, of the Rocketeer, a little bit away from uh, away from James Horner, but we're going to talk oh, a little nice. bit more and uh, and chat chat on about that. But for folks who want to continue our conversation, which is scattered across the universe here, uh, please join us on our social media at the usual places: Twitter at uh, Rocketeer Minute, also on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash Rocketeer Minute, the big site RocketeerMinute.com. If you want to reach out to Billy, Billy Campbell is available at his own Twitter site at W O Campbell, William Oliver Campbell, out there on Twitter. He always likes hearing good news about the movies that you've seen that involve him. So please, which I which I look at about once a year. So. Yeah. <laughs> he'll get he'll, he'll he'll get your message eventually. So just it may be Christmas, but you'll see. Sometimes it's at two in the morning, so just, <laughs> <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> yes. So uh depends anyway, on how much giggle juice I've Yes. Had. <laughs> giggle juice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little of the old rot gut. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll have some more stuff here uh, uh, tomorrow. And uh, by the way, if you haven't gotten there already, and I really must ask once again, please go subscribe to us on iTunes, on Google Play. Just go type in Rocketeer Minute, hit subscribe, and you will get us every day quality, quality uh, podcast material for you to listen while you're huffing down the treadmill. Um, all, all these many stories and we have many more to go so please join us here tomorrow and the days after on the Rocketeer Minute so until next time over and out thanks boys Get him, kid.